This is High School Not So Much a Musical, a podcast that takes you on a ride through the peaks and valleys of a high school journey. Here are your presenters, Nitin Jaladanki and Ayush Agarwal. Hello everybody and welcome back to a new episode of High School Not So Much a Musical. Today we're joined with one of my friends, Tanvita Kotla, who recently got into WashU at St. Louis. So Tanvita, could you please describe a little bit about yourself because you're just a high schooler like the rest of us. Just sort of tell us about your journey and how you got into doing medical at Washington, St. Louis. So I'm a high schooler at Alliance Academy in Georgia and my school is kind of different. It has It's mostly career-based and it has different pathways that we have to choose during our freshman freshman year and we continue that pathway throughout high school and usually we get a certification at the end. So some of the pathways include the emergency medicine pathway, the law pathway, mechatronics, etc. And I chose emergency medicine obviously. So in my freshman year, I did I took the intro to healthcare class, and that was the introduction class that taught us like medical terms, um, CPR. We got CPR certified certified in our freshman year, and it's kind of like an introduction to the background of medicine. So not like actual anatomy and physiology, but more like how hospitals work, insurance. Um, HIPAA rules and regulations for all professionals in the healthcare field. And then in my sophomore year, I took the um, essentials healthcare class. So that's what you would probably think of if you think of a healthcare class. It's the anatomy and physiology behind um, medicine. And we learned about the different body systems, what they do. And then basically, those two classes were kind of giving us the background and information to go into the emergency medical responder pathway and that class is in our third year and that's when we get our first certification so um, through that we have to learn about different ways to treat patients and it's actual patient care and we learn about um, different diseases conditions um, diagnosis diagnoses that we could give to patients in the field and then how we would treat them with medication or procedures that we could do in the pre-hospital setting. So that was that's basically the course that everyone takes if you're going into emergency medicine. Um, but for a select few individuals, there is an emergency medical technician pathway, and that's what I'm in. So that's the fourth year course. So as a senior, you get to do that course and you actually get to go out into the field, ride ambulances, and you get to one-on-one see what's actually going out in the field, going on in the field. And we get to interact with real patients, real hospitals, real paramedics. And it's a really great opportunity to see all those things as a high school student because for people that aren't sure if this is what they actually want to go into, um, that's a huge deal. And it can really make or break your future. And I think it's a great opportunity for high school students to have that. But yeah, that's kind of my background to healthcare. I mean, I was interested in healthcare for a long time before that, but this really solidified it and made me confident in my abilities to pursue pursue medicine. So I did apply to WashU and that's one of the top pre-med schools in the country. So I'm hoping to get my education there and pursue medicine afterwards through medical school yeah thank you for that um now we get now we're like now we know a little bit more about you and like your career path that you took in high school so the question i have for you is that since like your school has connections with local hospitals through the career matching program that like you sign up for um in your high school could you please talk about your internship um at the hospital near you and like what are some of the main things you've learned and how it shaped you as a person Yeah, so my internship is through a program called Work-Based Learning, which is separate from the ambulance service that we do. Um, And that's kind of like a period that they block out for you so that you could go out into whichever um, internship that you got. So I got my internship at a local hospital called Northside. Um, It has locations all over Georgia, but I'm doing the Forsyth County one. And... Basically, 
for the people that got that internship, you had to apply to be part of the Northside internship group, but for the people that got that, you get four different rotations throughout the school year. So it started in August and it's gonna end in May. So my four rotations were labor and delivery, the laboratory, um, oncology and cardiology. So I started in the labor and delivery unit for the first three months and I got to see um, vaginal and cesarean deliveries. And it was a really cool experience because I don't think normal teenagers, high schoolers get to see birth happen, but I got to see that it was really an interesting experience. Um, but basically what we do is, what we did in the labor and delivery unit was I just shadowed the nurses. The nurses are really the ones that see most of the patients because the doctors usually come in at the end to just help deliver the baby at the end and then that's it, they just leave. But it was really cool seeing what else the nurses do. They take care of the mom before um, she goes into labor. They take care of her while she's while her um, while she's getting dilated, and they give her her medications and all sorts of stuff. So that was the labor part. But um, within my labor and delivery rotation, we had two different rotations. So I also went to. Um, mother baby, which is basically the care that they have after the baby is born. So for the first few days, if the baby has like any sort of condition, they're taking care of the baby, they're helping the mom learn how to breastfeed, they're helping her figure out um, all sorts of stuff with the baby. So that was also a really cool experience. And um, even though I couldn't do much in labor because I'm just a high schooler, I was able to help out in the mother baby unit because I was able to take vital signs um, and witness some really cool things. So yeah, that was my first rotation. And then in the laboratory, that's basically the background of the entire hospital. The whole hospital has a tubing system where they send in specimens from patients through the hospital and it goes to the lab. So I was able to examine some of those specimens in microbiology, the chemistry unit, histology unit, and it was really cool experience to see um, what goes on behind the scenes for testing. Um, and yeah, and we also got to see the outpatient lab, which is where they actually draw the blood and draw the specimens. And that was also a really interesting part. Yeah. yeah. So I have a question about like the whole labor process. Mm -hmm. So um, like are or nurse or I'm sorry, are like nurses or doctors like uh, are there like like some doctors that are just specialized in like, you know, giving labor and helping? Um... <laughs> I don't even remember my question. Bro. Are there special fields that help specify like are there special fields that are specifically just helping deliver the baby? And like what, what would that be called? Um. Okay. OBGYN is basically that. Um, there were like, sometimes it wasn't like a doctor um, delivering the baby, it was like a midwife. And there's also, there's also some doctors that specialize in like cesarean delivery. So that's like the surgery part. Um, but I think it would just be OBGYN and then it depends on like because they're um, at the hospital, there's a whole women's center, and one part of the building is like um, women's care and like OBGYN stuff, and then the other part is labor and delivery. So I'm pretty sure that those doctors switch between those two, and if they wanted to stay in labor, um, they could do that, or they could switch between both of them. But yeah, um, if they wanted to, some of them, if they just wanted to do labor and delivery, they would just be the midwives. But yeah. Okay, so like one question that I had was you mentioned like cesarean, which is like when they surgically like deliver the baby. So like one of the things I remember at my elementary school was that like my principal wanted to deliver her baby on New Year's at like 12 o'clock sharp. So how exact, like it's a serious question, how exactly would some, somebody like plan out their pregnancy so like they go into labor exactly when they want to or like they get the surgery exactly when they want to to deliver the baby at like maybe a certain time? You can't go into labor at a certain time, 
but I think with a cesarean delivery, you can plan it out. Um, I don't know why you do that, but basically when I was watching the C-sections, um, it would happen, most of them, I never watched any delivery that had any complications. So most of them were like out by six minutes and I guess they could just like keep the baby inside the stomach until 12 if they wanted to. But if there's any complication, obviously that wouldn't happen. So you would just have to, you obviously have to um, finish your complete labor, I mean, pregnancy before you can deliver the baby. So if the baby was like at full term and like nine months and was healthy and stuff at New Year's 12 o'clock, then you could just wait to have the C-section at that time. Uh, and kind of wanted to shift the topic a little bit to what did your day in the life look like while you were kind of balancing between school and the internship? Because uh, I know uh, most kids actually end up getting internships over the summer, right? Just so they have a little more time to focus on it. They can give like eight hours a week or sorry, eight hours a day, whatever to the internship. But since you were kind of doing school and the internship at the same time, like what did your um, kind of balance look like and what did your typical day look like? So as I mentioned, my school has a work-based learning program that's all over my county, but you get to block out one to three periods of your day for work-based learning, which is your internship. Um, I was originally going to do that, but I decided not to because of like technical stuff, but um, that's an option available for all the students in my county. If you, if you get to, if you can meet all your graduation requirements, then you'll be fine. But um, that's one of the options that you could do. But as a senior, I finished all my credit, all my graduation requirements last year, except for ELA. So I have a shortened schedule this year. So I'm able to just go to the um, hospital whenever I have a free period. So I have a free period every morning. So I go to my internship and then I go to school. And then after school, I go to work and find time to do homework and stuff whenever, whenever I can, but yeah. So like one of the things that, um, well, one of the things that I remember was that like you looked pretty dead in the morning when you were doing like these internships. So how ex- was, so my question is, is there like a um, qualification to go into the internship? Like do you have to do like a physical test? Because one of the things that, I, that you mentioned was like, you have to like help bring people into the ambulance. So are there like strength tests and other stuff like that, that you need to like pass before you get your certification? So. There's like a certification to get CPR, but is there certification to just get into the ambulance program as a whole? Um, no. You just have to get all your vaccines, your immunizations and stuff, and you send in the paperwork and you're fine. But for the um the strength stuff, most of the people who decide to do emergency medicine or they try to be paramedics, they um they just have that background, like at the um, at the emergency station, they have like weightlifting stuff, they have squat racks and they have all that. Um, so they're just like working on that as they go. And we, during our class last year, we worked a lot on like the stretching uh, mechanisms. Like she's, our teacher is making us make sure is making us make sure that our back is like straight when we lift it. She's teaching us how to move the stretcher, how to lift the stretcher, how to put patients on. It's kind of just like a part of the training itself. And the strength comes along with that as we go, I guess. Yeah. Okay. And then one last question that I had before, like I pass it on to somebody else was like, um, because you're working in such an interesting time where COVID, where like COVID is like almost at a height, like now that we're, now with Omicron is almost like a fifth wave or something like that. How exactly was it working like with a mask on? Cause it's already hard enough, like in such a high pressure situation that you're breathing faster and your adrenaline is going faster. 
so for all like the health so one of the things that i saw on tiktok and i think a lot of people saw was like healthcare workers taking off like five masks at the end of the day and their face is like indented with the mask and stuff like that so how exactly when you were working for just one period do you think that working with the mask was a lot harder than if you had to just work without the mask on no i mean i just kept it on the whole time it didn't really obstruct anything it didn't get in the way but i do know that a lot of the paramedics at this point they're like comfortable with not wearing the mask and um it's not really a requirement to wear the mask and even my my healthcare teacher she was a paramedic for a long time and she was telling us that she never got the flu vaccine like ever even like every year with each um different influenza she never got it because she just trusted her um immune system because it just protected her after being in the field for so long you just get exposed to so many things that your immune system kind of just like backs you up but i kept my mask on and it didn't really get in the way and i think i'll continue to put my mask on but it's not really a requirement it in the pre-hospital setting it's not really as big of a regulation as it is in the hospital like at the hospital you have to wear a mask that's a requirement but yeah yeah so the next question i have for you is based off of like what you mentioned at the start of this podcast and it was that like um you had this like career direction program whenever you entered or when you became a freshman in high school and i like there's public schools here that do the same thing like my my close friend he um he's doing he's doing a business program in his high school so like he he was a freshman last year and then now all the most of the classes he take they set their revolved around like entrepreneurship and business so like is that similar for you and like or the question i have for you is that what were the other options um like available like i know you went and did healthcare but what else was out there and like why did you choose to do healthcare yeah so um with us it's not really like all of your courses are based on healthcare it's just like one pathway so it's like a four year plan for what courses you're going to take to um help you with that career so like i mentioned the first year course through the fourth year courses are basically planned there for you but everything else is just whatever you want to take so i took my core classes i took my aps and my duals and it it's just kind of like supplementing your normal path your normal schedule basically so i did choose healthcare but i was debating on some of the other ones um there's a law pathway it's really cool oh yeah i forgot to mention my school even though it's just like career oriented they take it to the extremes like we have a human robot in our healthcare room and we have an ambulance in there we have um stretchers inside there and then the law pathway has a courtroom and the mechatronics room has um like a bunch of different engineering kind of simulations and they have like welding equipment they have all sorts of things they have 3D printers um we have a cybersecurity room um oh yeah that's a really cool room they have like a bunch of computers in that room and apparently one of the things that they do is they all get on the computers and they try to hack each other and that's kind of like one of their training sessions i guess and there's we have aerospace there's airplane simulators in there and what else is there I think that's all of them. But okay. Um So, if you didn't have like this career direction program to kind of guide you into med, do you think you would have still ended up in med with like other guidances like taking like AP courses like biology and like that kind of using that to discover your passion for med and like would your extracurricular activities besides this program would still would they still have been structured around like biology and Yeah, I've been interested in healthcare since I was like 5 years old. It's always been what I wanted to do. And um yeah, so I have a bunch of healthcare oriented extracurriculars even like outside of my school ones and that includes HOSA. I don't know if you guys heard of HOSA, but it's kind of 
um, a healthcare based organization and I'm the vice president of my chapter at my school for that. So through stuff like that and there's also like a club called EMS which is also an emergency medical services club through those two I feel like I still would have ended up in this pathway but that's kind of like that's kind of what I've been working towards for my whole life so I think it's just something that I'm kind of stuck with now. So like before we get into some more questions like we know like our cat our conversation with most of our guests are like super super like formal and it's like really hard to like ask them to like change topics and stuff so I'm wondering if you had any questions for like the three of us because you are, you're obviously like a year older than us so you have a lot more experience with high school so if you just had any questions for us it would it would be great to answer them all three of us can just go around and answer them I'll your- cut this part out so you can take your time. What are your plans for after high school? Rishi, do you want to go first? Uh, so after high school, I hope to go to college. I mean, like, yeah, I mean, hopefully it's like a decent college. But um, yeah, I want like in college, I want to do something like um, along the lines of like combining biology with technology or biology with technology and like engineering but yeah that's what i want to do i use biotech huh? um my friend actually has do you have iGEM in california uh i don't think so oh uh, we have a lot of um my base school basically you have to choose to go to my school it's kind of like an application system but my base school has a program called iGEM for biotech and one of my friends is on there she like has a bunch of research projects. She's making some kind of like, I think water filtration system. But yeah, if you guys want, if you want me to like connect you with her, if you want any connections, let me know. Yeah, cause like our school also is like the application process, but we have like the bare minimum there. They don't give any of like the extra stuff because like HOSA is almost like DECA, but it's like medical oriented. Mm. Yeah. Okay, so, yeah, that's, we basically, we have, the, I mean, Rich, do you want to talk more about, like, the clubs that you're part of, like, AI for healthcare and that kind of stuff? Yeah, so, like, I'm, currently, I'm in AI for healthcare, where, or that club, it's not really too much, it's not really focused, like, a lot on the engineering or the coding aspect, but it's more focused on, like, like, health and medicine and, like, what solutions are already out there. But like next year, I'm starting my own club. It's called Design for Assistive Technology. And it's it's called Design for Assistive Technology. And it's basically combining like biotechnology. And then at the end of the year or throughout the year, like all the students, they'd be working on like interviewing like someone who has a disability and making some sort of assistive technology for them. Uh, Ayush, you can go. Oh, okay. Okay. So, uh, I think after high school, yeah, go to college, maybe, and then just go into, like, some quantitative field, like, like, econ or data science, and I'm, I'm not sure what I want to do after that. Maybe, Are like, sure? uh, minor in sustainability? Or, or gender studies. Are you sure you want to go to college? Like, why do you think, like... What are the benefits of going to college and like not community college? Yeah, community college might be an option actually. Uh, go to Evergreen Valley College and like go there for two years and switch to like. Yeah, I have a you can friend named Shreyas who I have a friend named Shreyas who actually wants to go to community college for two years and then go to a uh, UC. But um, for me personally, uh, like the the top two schools are probably UPenn and. Uh, NYU but like there's a specific program in UPenn and like all it's always for me it's always been technology and business and like business was honestly where like it's kind of like my niche you can pretty much ask me anything about business and I can just answer it I got my skill from I don't I don't really know where I like got the general knowledge from but business is pretty much where I really want to go into and like the intersection of that and technology is really interesting so definitely college and then hopefully i can get a job and then doing do like my bachelor's or like an mba or something like that 
and opened my own like financial investing firm for tech and business companies. Thank you so much for tuning into this episode of High School Not So Much Musical. Join us in part two of this episode where we talk with Tanvita about how you can get into your dream medical school. Thank you so much for listening and we'll see you next time. That's our show for today. Now roll the credits. High School Not So Much Musical is hosted by Ayush Agarwal, Nitin Jaladanki, and Rishi Sinha. Narration by Samhit Padala. Music from Louis Luang Relaxation Cafe, Tune Pocket, and Infraction. If you like the show, please recommend it to your friends and family. Thank you so much for listening and we'll see you next time.